Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, this is the uh, October 23rd meeting of the, of the ordinance committee to the uh, subcommittee to Holyoke City Council. I'm serving as a chair tonight, and then uh, sitting in tonight pursuant to Rule 31 of the Holyoke City Council uh, rules is the City Council President Todd McGee. All right, that rule, um, which I'm just going to ask our administrative assistant who's videotaping us downstairs, if you would just duly note that in the, in the meeting minutes. Um, and then when another member of the committee comes, uh, he, he or she or he or can, can uh, join us. Uh, I don't have prior meeting minutes before us, so if, if, um, if I could get a, I guess we'll get a motion to take one off the table for purposes of discussion. Okay, okay um, the uh, motion has been made and seconded. Um, on the motion, take number one off the table. All in favor, aye. Uh, public hearing, residence petition, council order, Todd McGee, ordered that the permanent, ordered the permanent speed bumps be installed on Bemis Road. Um, we have, um, who, who's, who's here from Bemis Road? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I, you know, I'm going to, I'll, I'll let, I'll let the Ward 7 counselor, I, was, we're supposed to open up a public hearing, uh, and I'm going to let the Ward 7 counselor make a comment in a second, but I, I think some of you know, or you, maybe you don't know, that the meeting was, this meeting, you, you got letters, and there's a butter notice letters, and it's within 300 feet of of the of the locust, if you will, is of any butter within that perimeter is, is to be noticed. And it was it was brought to the attention, well, my attention, but I think others' attention that that a butters that all the butters were not noticed. So, for example, a butters on Meadow Meadowview Meadowview uh, Road, uh, Meadowview Road, for example, were not noticed this meeting. It's my opinion, and and it's also, and I'll read the, I'll, I'll let Todd McGee speak in a minute. But uh, it's we did receive, we did receive a communication from our law department relative to this, and she wrote the following. Be nice if I called this up beforehand. Um, um, she wrote the following: the, the public hearing should not take place prior to the abutter notifications. General discussion from the committee is within your purview, without any decision making. Being that the meeting was posted and notified 48 hours prior, further discussion as to placement of the speed humps will further assist with the butter notification as we need to determine the affected areas. So that being said, we cannot open up a public hearing with, um, with, with your, 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 your presentation. So after Councilor McGee kind of gives us the, the background on this, um, I, it's, it's our, my understanding that, that at the next, for the next, uh, ordinance meeting, which is set for the second Tuesday in November, I want to say it's November 10th, we can, we will table this to that date. Mm -hmm. Councilor McGee. Yeah, thank you very much. And that's, that's the issue. In, in essence, we don't know exactly where the speed humps, if, if approved, once again, they haven't been approved yet, if approved, uh, would be placed, and then that would deal with the 300 foot buffer. So of which we said we can take it up for discussion here within the committee as to where those locations would be. Where did we get a report from DPW as to where they wanted to put them? I, um, I don't have, we have the city engineer with us, uh, Bob Parent. Uh, Bob, want, yeah, c come on in and then uh, turn on a microphone and then I want you to take any questions uh, from Councilor McGee. I did place a map on the council subcommittee table there. Um, if councilors wanted, there's a couple of copies there. Okay. 
so so if my if i may my understanding is the desire to install speed bumps go or speed humps more correctly mm -hmm. goes back a couple of years now prior to both myself and the current dpw director mike mcmanus being here as best we could tell based on records of where there were trial speed bumps placed at one point and a speed study done at one point it appears that the area that the council was originally subcommittee was originally focused on was the area that I shaded here in gray, which starts more or less at Hillview, heads to the west, and st ends somewhere around Meadowview. Um, that's our understanding, but again, neither one of us were here at that time, so it would be helpful to have it, the subcommittee or the committee um, ordinance committee confirm if that's really the focus of, of where the desire was. I don't think there was a specific location as to where the speed humps or bumps would be located. The study that was done was to see if the temporaries would have an impact as well as get actual numbers as to what was going on up there. Uh, the numbers came back and they're actually shocking as to the amount of traffic flow that's going through there as well as the police report as to how many people were pulled over either given warnings or tickets mm -hmm. for speeding. Um, so the the issue with the city is we don't have a ton of temporary speed humps. I think mm. we have two sets, and there's such demand for them. We you take it wherever you can throw them. Um, so we didn't put some at, at the top of Bemis, some at the bottom, or some in the middle. We just were able to put it right under the bridge to try and see if it would help. That doesn't mean that's where we want the location to be. I think that's where we're looking to engineering to say, hey, look. If you put one up at top, do you put one in the middle, do you put one at the bottom? What, what would be the best way to make the traffic flow and slow it down, as well as not hurt the side streets? The, the intent is not, and I, I did receive that one email that said, well, if you put them just in the middle, they'll just go down Meadowview, turn, come down and come out, and in essence, avoid them. That's not the intent. I think there was some uh, fear to that because there was a water main break in essence, that kind of shut that area down, which enforced the flow around that way. So if we were to put one, once again, if, these are all ifs, if you put one up more past Meadowview where they have to go over it, one in the middle, one at the end, does that help? We go to the experts like you to figure out th that type of answer, as well as to address that the side streets not get impacted. The real issue with, with Bemis is, is kind of like when I was in Ward 6 is Hillside Ave. It's a cut through. I don't care what you do. You can put a police officer there 24-7, which is virtually impossible. You can put signs up all over the place. People don't read signs. They just speed. I've been up and down that street uh, going up to Wyckoff, whether for breakfast or for golf or to Mount Tom or, or to Log Cabin, whatever. You see the people. The 60 miles is not a blink of an eye. They will do it. They fly right by you. If you're coming down the turn, they take that turn, and it is scary. The problem with Bemis is you lack sidewalks, of which a ton of people are walking their dogs, they're walking it, they're jogging it. It is a safety hazard, and it's just a matter of time before someone gets hit. Because you don't have sidewalks, I filed the orders to see if you could put sidewalks. You'd have to take people's land. People don't want that happening to their property. I've asked for signage. I've asked for the temporary study. I've asked for pretty much everything under the sun, which then came to some of the residents said, enough is enough. We're going to ask for a petition to then go up and down and see if people want speed humps. That's permanent now. Sure. So they went out and did that. That wasn't me. They went out. They took the initiative. I know who did it. I'm not going to point names. And they did a great job gathering signatures, more than what is required. Now the question is, since the vast majority want it on that area, how do you address it to make sure no one else is impacted? At the same time, you know, making it work. We all know if you want an example of a speed hump, you look at Vermont, you look at Dartmouth. They're not big bumps that take your tires out. They're gradual. So therefore, some arguments are, well, it's going to be bad in the winter. No, it's a nice flow through. Dartmouth is a classic example of how it works. Way back when, I wasn't here on the council when they did Dartmouth. That was a battle. And I talked to former councilor um, Mark Joyce, and he said, worst thing to do is speed humps because if you want it, 
50 don't. But if you now look at the residents on Dartmouth, they want those there simply because it is a cut through and it slows the traffic down. They'd actually want something else done there because between one speed hump to the next one, people are trying to zero to 60 to get to that next speed hump. So the real issue is to engineering, to help the people and the side streets, where can we put the speed humps? We need you to tell us sure. from that point, wherever that bump is or hump, we then have to go 300 feet out and let those people come into November 10th, if that's the date, to voice their concern, yes or no, so then we can vote on it. Um, we want public comment. Once again, uh, the petition was done by residents talking to fellow residents as to the safety concerns up there. So that's where we stand. This will be tabled. I did mention that in my email. This is not to rush things through. We don't do that here. So if you can come back and tell us prior, or it's going to have to be sometime next week because then we have to get the notices out mm -hmm. to those of butter. So there's a tight time frame. I do apologize sure. for that. No if you can't do it, we'll just have to continue it till the second meeting in November to make sure we do it correctly. If, so, if I may, a couple yeah. of comments on, 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 on your comments. Um, like anything, there's always trade-offs. There's always consequences. You do one thing and something else results from it. So there are trade-offs oftentimes. Um, <coughs> in terms of spacing of speed bumps, um, if you want to re realize a benefit, and I shouldn't be saying, saying speed bumps, it's speed humps. Speed humps are what you described. Um, lower, longer, wider. They're not the abrupt uh, bone-shaking type, but they're, they're enough to encourage people to slow down. Um, in order to be effective, you need to space them at a regular spacing every 500 feet or less. If you put one at the end of the street and one at the other end of the street, people slow down to hit that bump and then they speed up. So there need to be enough of them spaced close enough that you keep the speed limit down for the section of roadway that you want to keep it down. Um, if the concern, and if you wanted to look at the figure that I, I handed out, if you look at West Meadowview, um, clearly if in this gray area, if, if the speed humps went all the way to the west end of the shaded area, there would be a tendency for some people perhaps wanting to cut down Meadowview to, to avoid a couple of the speed humps. Um, Trade-off, if we wanted to reduce the chance of that happening, what I would say is we bring the um, shaded area back four or 500 feet to stop just before the other end of Meadowview. That way, there's no advantage to going down Bemis or Meadowview because there's no speed bumps. But then once they converge again, then you have two or three speed humps from that segment down to Hillview that will tend to reduce the speed through that segment. Um, people will then speed up on both ends of that segment. So it, it you know, perhaps what we could talk about is starting there. You know, it's not going to it's not going to reduce speeds at the other other end of Bemis. Um, the only way to do that is to do something at the other end, and that may have benefits. It may have negative impacts as well. But you know, if we're looking to come up with a solution that slows people down, particularly in the stretch going underneath 91, that minimizes the potential for people wanting to avoid the speed humps. Pulling this back a little bit might achieve both of those goals. So that's off the top of my head what my, my thoughts are, but I can put it in writing and, and put a bit more thought into it and look elsewhere in Bemis as well. Yeah, I mean, the thing would be is to get a report from engineering. Good mic, Todd. Oh. <clears throat> to get a report back from engineering in order to then see where the locations might be to then send out the notices correctly with regards to that. We could table it until... Well, we have to table it to a date certain. Well, I know we have to, and that's why I'm saying what date would be best for you. I know you guys are... Um, the most appropriate thing to do would be to do what we did a couple of years ago do another trial at the other end of Bemis, as an example. See what effect it would be able to then put in um, speed counters before and after, or before and during. Um, we haven't done that. This, as you said, I believe it's true. This is the location we did it at then. We documented that there could be a benefit from that. We haven't done that anywhere else in Bemis at this point. 
Um, so if it's the committee's desire for us to look across the entire reach of Bemis and have something to support a conclusion, we should probably do that first. Okay, so that would take, you know, could we do that and get the, the, the humps in and data in a month? It might be, the timing might not work. Um, we will try. I'm not going to guarantee that we have all the data in hand to be able to No, we to don't. I, I, yeah. My thing is, it, it, I don't want to rush it in the sense of whatever is going to be easiest to make sure if they do go in, they go in correctly for everybody. Right. So if that means you need till the 20th of November or because uh, that would be the, that's no, that's the third, so 27th would be. Yeah, so if I may, okay, go ahead. Um, if I may, um, just just so the public knows, we, I get a lot of we get a lot of criticism for looking at our phones. We're looking at our phones to look up the calendar. Yeah. So just for the for the record, I'm not checking the Red Sox score yet. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So, um, do I sound cynical? I don't mean to. Uh, okay. Um, so so, so uh, Councilor McGee, President McGee, what I would what, what I'm hearing from from uh, the city engineer is it is it best case would be into November and now we're into the holiday period and so it's going to be like to go to December would uh, December be better I, I, I would say if I may I, I would say let, let's consider tabling this to December December 11th and that's our that's our first meeting in in December and, yeah, and, and my hope is that'll give that'll give uh, now we're not meeting on December 25th so the meeting after that will be uh, the second Tuesday in January. You have been on the 24th, though, just pointing that out. Oh, I realize that. I, I was here. Uh, so I was here. So uh, I'll say that. I, I'll also, also say that uh, President McGee is absolutely right. We only have two sets of, allegedly, only have two sets of. Uh, welcome to um, uh, Nelson Roman, and also welcome to Councilor Joe McGivern. Uh, and um, uh, for their for their presence, uh, Nelson's a member of the committee. Uh, we 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 have an order passed by this body to see if we can get appropriation from for for an additional 10 speed humps in the city because we just we just need them and this is a, a chronic issue th throughout throughout the community. I know no one in, in this room ever speeds ever through a neighborhood. I I can't imagine that ever happening, uh, but uh, in this in this room couldn't couldn't can never see that. However, I think it's important that we, that we get some sort of intel. Uh, relative to this, so I'll just, um, I'll, so I'll, December eleventh. Yeah, I'll entertain that motion. I, is that reasonable, Bob? Is that? I believe so. You know, barring we don't have inclement weather and snow in a week or something like that, that might create a problem. I, I mean, it's. I mean, engineering wise, how long does it take to put them in? It, it, it's approved today. Certainly. Just making up an example. It's yep. approved today. How long does it take to put those in? It's typically it's a multi-step process. We like to collect Someone. existing speed data, so we'll put the traffic counters out. For no, I'm me. not talking that stuff. I'm going to say if your permanent ones were approved oh, right today, they still take a while to put in. Yeah. There's a time frame to it. There's a Obviously. scheduling issue, et cetera, primarily. So you really yeah. couldn't do it this year anyways. Because Unlikely, of, we're getting to the point where weather conditions are starting to drop and temperatures are dropping, and we want to make certain that we're putting the pavement down when it's going to stay and not come back. So it, it's it only makes sense to get the study done correctly and come back with a report that really addresses everything, and then get out to proper notice. So before December eleventh. Before I take a motion, Councilor Anderson Burgos wants to. Well, comment. my question is the material that you use to create. Thank you. Um, the material you use to create the, the humps, um, under certain temperatures, does it cure correctly? Because sometimes if, I know that with um, when my chimney was being worked on, <clears throat> they had to do it during the summer because the way it cures, it sure. doesn't cure right if it's in the winter. It's a, it's a typical asphalt product. It's a little bit different gradation of asphalt, finer material on the speed humps. But we typically don't like to pave if the temperature is lower than 50 degrees. Yeah, that um, and the, the pavement needs to be dry as well. So right, if you have wet yeah. pavement and it's cool, you know, we're potentially compromising the material. And that's my, my concern is because then if we invest to make these, you know, put these humps in, then are they going to, you know, are they going to stay intact? Right. Good that's point. just something to consider. So I, I do think we can collect what I'm hearing and understanding now is that we're looking, our, the goal is to look at really the totality of Bemis and come back to the 
to the committee with you know a to b here are recommendations it might be only focused on one location it might be focused on multiple locations to get to that conclusion i believe i can get there by december again providing it doesn't snow tomorrow and we don't want to be putting down temporary speed bumps at that point okay, okay so so, so motion is made motion be table till december 11th okay motion is made and seconded seconded to uh table uh this to 12 11 18 at 6 30 p.m on the motion all in favor aye, aye. motion carries four four nothing thank you um I, so so just so i think the, hopefully the public understood all that that we're not going to do anything until we a properly notice but we can't properly notice till we really understand what the scope is of the job so we understand that all right here you go i'll go answer questions all right Okay, if I could get a uh, motion taken by the number two and continue, and continue the public hearing. Motion, second motion made and second to uh, take item number two off the table and continue the public hearing on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Special permit application from Westfield Bank for installation of, of an automatic teller machine at 1650 Northampton Street. And we've continued this a couple times. I believe I saw the, the attorney for the proponent uh, here. Um, Attorney Dunahue, is there anything else that you want to add at this point? Just ma uh, come up to the mic and make sure. So just ma make sure that mic is on, and just always talk into the mic. And you, you can take it off the stand if, if, that's, if you're more comfortable. I got it. Okay. All right. Um, at the last meeting, there was discussion about the need for the bank to file for a special permit for a drive-through automatic teller machine. We've spoken with uh, representatives of the city, building department, engineering department, planning department, and um, we are in the process of filing that application. The reason that it was not filed shortly after your last meeting is that in reviewing your ordinance, there's a requirement in there that the application must be filed along with a site plan that shows very specific stacking requirements for the vehicles at the lane that's going to be there, the parking, also the other traffic lanes through the lot, as well as the entrances and exits from the lot. Now, the plan that we submitted with this petition before you tonight had a general scope of the entrances, the exits, where the building was located, and the parking spaces. But what we did not have and have only recently received is the more formalized plan that shows the stacking lanes in not only the proposed ATM lane, but also the existing drive-through teller lane that exists now. So that we've got a, our application will have a plan that shows how the entire parcel is going to work um, in relation to the requested uh, drive-through ATM. So, um, we, ex we hope to have that filed by the end of the week or the beginning of next week at the earliest, at the latest. So <clears throat> at that point, that would come before the council and then be forwarded to your committee for further review. The petition that's before you tonight, though, is to allow the machine to be placed on the existing pedestal that's there as an addition or modification of the pre-existing non-conforming structure that's already on the site. And given the fact that whether or not this project is going to go forward really is going to hinge on how you feel the um, plan showing the tra traffic, parking, stacking is going to work up, we would submit to you that we've presented sufficient facts and information to establish the criteria under your own ordinance set in, set in section 9.3.2 as to what's necessary uh, in order for a special permit to be granted to a pre-existing non-conforming structure and that the relief that we're asking for for the ATM to be machine to be approved to be placed at that location uh, is that it can be done without any significant impact on the community there's already an ATM there it's a walk-up, not a drive-up, but that walk-up is going to be removed. 
We don't anticipate and we believe the traffic, we also have to file a traffic study with the other application that's coming in. We think that traffic study is going to show there's really going to not be any great impact uh, to the site above and beyond what's currently there. What we'd like to do, if we could, is to move forward um, with filing the ATM applic application for the special permit for the drive-through, but we'd also ask you to forward our request for a modification to the pre-existing non-conforming bank building and kiosk to the council for its approval for us to move forward and make your decision. Okay, committee members or uh, council members have a questions for Attorney Dunny while he's at the mic. Uh, thank you, Attorney Dunny. Uh, we are in a public hearing. Are there any members of the public want to speak in, in favor or, or opposed to this? If so, come up to the mic, state your name and address, and uh, you know, take a minute and a half, two minutes, whatever you need. Dave O'Brien, 104 St. James Avenue, a butter on the eastern side of the bank property. I, I guess what you've just said is that you're going to put the... Mr. O'Brien, just you have to address, just address me. We're not addressing, you're only, only addressing sorry. the chair. I guess what was just said is that their intention is to put the ATM um, out where it's going to permanently be placed. So what's to say that it's not going to stay there forever i mean it, it doesn't make a lot of logical sense to me to say okay you can go ahead and put the put the the atm in the location now for how long um, is it going to be operable and for how long is it going to stay there um i don't know it just doesn't some well, I, I mean, I, I, I think I think you're I think you're right, Mr. Bryan. I, I, I think though this is a precursor. He, he's, he's, there's two special permits at play here. One is before us, and one is about to be filed. I understand. So, okay, so if you understand that, then then you know that he has to have a special permit to place the ATM in the drive-through area. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. But as you can understand, if he doesn't get the drive-through permit, they're not very well going to. Special special permit. They're not very well going to keep the eight. They're not very well going to act on the special permit with, without the drive-through special permit. I guess therein lies my question. Um, if you if you guys don't grant the special permit, does he then have to pull that temporary ATM out of there? Well, I, I'm 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 going to I'm going to let I'm going to let him him answer that. But okay. but I'm going to I'm going to suggest to you that if we grant the special permit. And if he wants to put an ATM under that under that roof, yep. and if we don't grant the drive-through permit, then then yes, he could leave that ATM right there, and 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 consumers are going to have to walk up to that. Okay. okay. Walk up to it, not drive up to it. Okay. But that I, wasn't... I, but, but that, that's what I heard him say. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let him answer that. But your wife's behind you, so so. <laughs> it, it, so uh, is that, but is that your only question, Mr. Brian? That was my question. Okay, Mrs. O'Brien, just your name and your... Uh, my question is, if it Ms. stays... Mrs. O'Brien, just your first name again. Susan. Thank you. If it stays there as a permanent walk-up ATM, I would think that there would be some other issues, dangerous issues of people walking up to an ATM that is adjacent to a drive through teller um, and obviously not a very safe thing. I also, my other question is, what, where does this two-year non-use legal issue come into play here? Did they need a permit because it's non-conforming? Did they need a permit because it hasn't been used in two years? And where, where does the, ha it hasn't well, been used you, in two as, years? Well, Mr. Bryan, I think you heard us at the last meeting. We're not represented by counsel tonight, so I'm not giving a legal opinion, but what I heard her say yeah. is that because it hasn't been used within the last two years, it is not, it is not grandfathered, therefore, they're coming before us. That's what I heard her say. Okay. Does that answer your question? I think so, but. Well, um, I, I heard her say that. So, so, still. Be but you, you, you can watch the watch the tape again if if you're. No, that's all right. All I, right. I, uh, I'll, uh, I, I'll concede. I don't know. No. Okay. Attorney Donio, go ahead. In, in the mic. Confuse the issue unintentionally. Yes. Um, usually, I try to confuse the issue, but this time I was unintentional. <laughs> A smart uh, lawyer. Good. What we're saying with the applications before you today is we're asking for you to approve that and submit it to the full council for approval. 
we understand, and I believe it's the opinion of the uh, law department, at least the planning department, that we need both special permits in order to operate an ATM at the kiosk location. There you go. So we're not saying that if you approve what we ask you for tonight, the modification to the pre-existing non-conforming structure to allow the ATM to go in, that we're going to put one in. We need that first approval to even get to the level of getting the okay. special permit for the drive-through. We need both of them in order for it to do it. Okay, so the O'Briens, do we understand that answer? He, he, they, they need both. So they, they can't have, they, this, is, this, is a, this is a precursor. Okay. So, so uh, if, he doesn't get the, if he doesn't get the second one, game, set, match. Okay, but, but my question still is, is the, the equipment going to be installed? No. It, okay. So, no. Well, there you go. Wow. Well, that's that's a, best answer you heard all night. That's we, that we get the yeah. approval because we've okay. got the filings running. But I, I thought that's what you said. Thank well, you. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna install it until we have both approvals to go forward. And there's no walk up to this one that we're proposing. The walk up ATM is the one that's there now. That's if, if both approvals get made, that's going away. But this one that we're proposing is strictly a drive-up, not a walk-up. All right, thank you, Attorney Daniel. Uh, any other members of public in favor or opposed to this particular item? Any counselors have questions? <coughs> I don't see any counselors with questions. Uh, I'd entertain a motion, um, for example, to close the public hearing, or if you want to continue this public, if you need to continue it, but... I'm going to uh, make a motion to continue the public hearing. I want to see the secondary application come in. I want to take them both up at the same time. That's just my thought process, Mr. Chair. That's that's perfectly that's perfectly uh, understandable. Um, that motion was made and seconded under discussion. I um, you have to have a date certain though. Well, we we don't have anything yet. We don't. I just have a motion before us. I um, let me ask. You know, that's that's not an unreasonable motion. Let me just let me just ask the uh, attorney. What what's your position on that? To, to take these both to both both up at the same time which which what's your client's position in, into the microphone well you got to speak well so the motion's been made to uh, continue this to wait till your other application has been submitted so we can have both before us at the same time well to be honest with you the second application is going to cost the bank a significant amount of money because the ordinance requires that there be a traffic impact study submitted. And although I read your ordinance and I believe, I believe that you would have the authority to waive that traffic study in speaking with your planning director of community of planning and development, it's his position that we need the traffic study in order to move forward with that. So if we're going to have to spend that kind of money, we'd like to know it at least that the issue is going to be whether the project works based on all of the factors and changes that are going to happen and not have it fall back on the change to allow the ATM to be put on the existing pedestal. So we'd prefer to have this go forward to the council, hopefully get the vote, and then you make the decision in the future on whether or not to allow the application for the drive through ATM based on your department's review of the plot plan that submitted showing how we meet the requirements that are imposed by the ordinance for a drive through to be approved. We prefer that, but it's your decision to do what, what you feel is, is best interest of, of your committee. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I heard the motion. Do you want, you want to keep the motion? Okay, the motion, motion made and seconded uh, to continue this to a date certain. Uh, what date did you have in mind? That would depend. What's your next meeting? For the next meeting. Uh, okay, so the, the applicant have their application in yet by then, or sounds like it sounds like they would. Um, okay. But our next meeting here's the problem. Our next meeting. <laughs> In this committee is the 13th of November. That's two weeks. Yeah, and I don't believe that the full full council is meeting till the 20th. So I'm going to suggest if that is your motion that you make it to the 20th to, to the uh, to the second meeting of November, which would be the 27th. So moved. 
Second. Okay, motion made and seconded um, to continue this to the 27th for the foregoing reason. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, none. Okay, so it was continued. This is continued to a day certain, tabled, whatever it is, uh, tabled, continued to 11 27 6 30 p.m. Motion to take up item number three. Second. Uh, just before you do oh, that, sorry, why don't we? Uh, we have Front a order. memorandum. A memorandum in front of us. Okay. Uh, let's take up. Uh, would you suspend? Uh, suspend to take up three through. So moved. Ten, Ten as a package. As a package. Second. On the motion uh, to take uh, uh, suspend our rules. Take up the table uh, agenda items three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, all at once as a package on the motion. Second. Yep. It's a motion made and second. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, motion made, second, and it's approved. Uh, before us, uh, I am just going to do a very brief interview. They're all traffic related issues. Yep. Actually, let's just comb through them at the, at Mr. the, the President, one at a time. Mr. Chair, just number, item number 10 on this memorandum doesn't match item number 10 on our agenda. Um, so. Okay. So it looks like. <laughs> Looks might, like might have been a clerical error. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten Three, on our three agenda. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll put the ten if you look at it. No, Yours I, is about a DPW issue. I don't understand. Which which one is which one? Here, Mr. Chair. I got to get a pen. Hold on, Bob. Let's just make sure we have the right stuff before us. So. Let's see, look right here. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Before us. Four is before us. Oh, th this one is okay. This one is uh, item nine is not before us on this one, so that's the that's the missing. Uh, no, that one is that one is before us. So, so, so on on on, on the engineer's memo, there's number nine's been resolved. So, um, okay. so we we are okay. We are so the motion's going to be just um, uh, we'll, we'll amend our motion to say we're going to take up items. Motion made and second to take up items three through nine. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. So let's just go through these one at a time. We have before us our, our city engineer, uh, Robert. Mr. Chairman, if I could. Oh. We, we do have members in the audience for item number eight. Oh. Yeah, we, well, we, we, why don't we skip right to that? Yeah. How about we, how about we, we can do that. Oh, look at this. Mm -hmm. All for number eight. Yeah. And I, I, right. Yes, that's okay. I, I knew you were there, but if okay, I have my glasses on. These are cheaters, but when I when I when I have the glasses on, I just focus on the paper in front of me. So we'll just go out of order because we have them all in front of us. Certainly. So so we'll now we're not in a public hearing, um, but we have traditionally, as in every single time, if somebody raises their hand, they want to make a comment. We have, we generally, as in always, suspend our rules and allow the public to address. Um, it makes us almost sound like we're important, but that, that's just it's just a procedural matter that we have to have. So, Mr. Parent, uh, would you take up uh, Council McGivern's suggestion? Would you take up number eight? Certainly. First, please. And first, my apology on carrying over that other item from a previous agenda to create that confusion. Um, item number eight, I think our response here is the same as it typically is for requests relative to resident parking. Those are primarily policy type decisions for the committee and for the council to make. It's definitely feasible. It's technically possible. Um, we understand that uh, we understand the issue. You know, we understand that the ability of residents to find parking can be can be impacted by businesses and, and, and people using those businesses, occupying that parking that the residents um, would like to use in the interests of the residents uh, and make that resident only. Okay, so it's it's your professional opinion it's it's technically we're, we're technically able to do that absolutely but, but you're, you're not weighing in as to whether we should that's not your position no so the city engineer says uh, technically we should do that do any other counselors want to speak on this matter Councilor McGivern thank you mr. chairman um, this is the second go around for uh, this request 
and I understand the concerns of residents in, in many neighborhoods in what we call as our downtown sector, but I think we have to remind ourselves of the history of the city being built as an industrial city back when the transportation modes were horse and buggy. Uh, if, one, if a family had one car, they were lucky. We had a bus, we had a bus uh, company that ran on the half hour. We had trolleys that ran on this particular street. And people in the, in all, and this is not just this particular neighborhood, all neighborhoods within the uh, district I'm talking about have a lot of walking where they would walk to the butcher, walk to the grocery store, walk to the barber, walk to the, uh, you, you name it, you know, their, their hairdresser, the, the corner bar was neighborhood bars were very prevalent and, and businesses were mixed with our residential use. It's, it's the, the beauty of the city and the curse of the city. Um, nowadays, families have not one car per family, but one car per person and family, and there is not enough parking. The particular building that requested this is, I believe, 3, 340. 340 Hampton Street. Um, I don't think has any off-street parking. You cannot build anything in, in a zone that, that re allows residential or commercial without off-street parking. The state does not allow anyone to to designate parking for individuals. We cannot designate on-street parking for businesses. If we do a residential parking, we have to do it with a badge, you know, for the people that live, that are, are residents of the neighborhood. The mistake I think we're making there is the people who go to the business in this particular neighborhood um, are residents, are taxpayers. And I think we forget that. We're a city. We're not a bedroom community. We're a city that has to look out for business. We're a city that has to look out for the uh, for our residents at the same time, this would be a, a severe hardship to at least two businesses in the area, and probably to a church also, which is around the corner on Pine Street. Um, also, note and I just wanted to remind people that you know not only do we have a different tax rate for our commercial property, um, commercial property pays taxes, and they also pay other taxes, which the city is the benefit of. Uh, Griffin's Cafe is valued at about $70,000. It's an older building. It could not be converted. It once looked like it was a home. I believe it was, even before my time. You know, Juan, if you're thinking about how old I am. And it, it pays taxes of about, estimated this year, about $1,300. Um, 340 Hampton Street is a home. Uh, its estimated value is, is less. And currently, it's a, it looks like it'll pay taxes of about eight hundred and forty-seven dollars this year, a slight difference than what the business who employs. I'm not sure how many people Sean employs, but Mr. Roan I think employs several people as uh, both his bartenders and, and work, working for cleaning the business itself. Oh, so uh, the, Councilor, just, just, for, just you, you, would you just give me the tax number, the, the tax numbers again, Councilor? The Griffins is assessed at seventy thousand dollars, which would be a tax bill this year of. $2,780 estimated. Okay, and then 340 um, High Street is uh, assessed at a, the tax bill is estimated to be about $870. It's, I don't have the, I can't read, the assessment is is less, I believe. Okay, we're, we're not, we're not going to hold you to it, just a ballpark. Yeah. Thank you, sorry, Just keep going. Okay. There are two apartment buildings across the street also that, you know, have, I believe, six units. One has six, I believe one has eight, and they're paying around 6000 around $4,000 respectfully. The condos down the street, I was surprised, are only valued at $60,000 and are paying about $2,700, and those are much newer, which usually their values would be higher. Uh, the establishment also pays, pays a meals tax. A lot of people don't realize that you pay meals tax on wine, beer, anything, even if food is not involved. And there's a local meals tax, I think most counselors know that we adopted, which raises the state meals tax from point, 0 0.625 to 0 0.70. And then the state funnels back the uh, taxes that are collected for the, for the local share for ourselves. As much, as much as I care about residents, I think we, most of us understand the argument that in order to exist as a city and to be, to be healthy and stable, we need to coexist with business. And a residential, um, a request for residential parking in this area, again, would be a hardship on, on two businesses in the church, which is, 
I don't know the address, Mr. Chairman, but it's on Pine Street around the corner. So I just asked the committee to consider uh, recommending not to vote in favor of residential parking. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, any other councillors want to speak on this at this point? Well, welcome, Councillor Lisi, member of the committee. Thank you for being here. Um, any other councillors want to speak on this? Uh, does any member of the public, well, we can suspend our rules. If, if Motion to suspend the rules to allow the public to speak. Second. Motion made in second to suspend our rules to allow the public to speak uh, with conditions mm -hmm. that uh, here's what we do. Uh, and the conditions are going to be um, you address me and and then you have up to 90 seconds. Okay. So read fast or <laughs> I got it. hold your peace. <laughs> All right. Okay. And name match. Okay, motion made and second until uh, suspend the rules on those conditions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, okay, name and address, please. My name is Kelly McGivern. I live on 195 here on Avid Hoyoke. I'm a Hoyoke taxpayer, a homeowner, and a resident of Hoyoke for the past 32 years of my life. Um, thank you for letting us speak here tonight on behalf of Griffin's Cafe. So I am speaking here this evening not only as a supporter of Griffin's, located on 329 Hammond Street in Hoyoke, but also as a supporter of the city of Hoyoke and all it stands for. Over the past 32 years, I've witnessed the city of Hoyoke support local businesses, businesses that have been here for over 70 years, like Griffin's Cafe, and those that are gonna open its doors and for the first time this coming year. We are a thriving city who promotes new businesses and thrives on businesses that have been here as a staple over the years. It is reasons for this why people uh, stay here and live here for as many years as they have, why we drive new residents to the city of Hoyoke, and why they stay to raise their families. All these re reasons also stay true, as over the past 32 years, I've also seen the city of Hoyoke support its local residents, which is why you have an ordinance up in front of you for review. Having a city that listens and responds to their residents and concerns is also another key piece to keeping the residents here in the city. Um, the last thing I just want to note here is, um, you know, my biggest concern is that we're looking at one small stretch of public parking in the city. There are over 15 distinct neighborhood sections within the city of Hoyoke, <coughs> each containing residential, main streets, and of course, local businesses, schools, hospitals, and places of worship. If I'm not mistaken, I believe we're looking at the corner of Beach and Hamden to the corner of Hamden and Pine. In this one block, it's made up of mostly residential homes with a few businesses in the middle of them. So if I may just ask three questions um, that you don't have to answer, but to keep in mind before you vote to send this out to full council for vote. So my questions to you, and then I will wrap this up, is, is this one block of residential only parking going to be ample parking for the residents living in the apartment buildings to solve the issues that you currently are facing? Since this is a public road, would it be correct that the side of Hampton Street that will remain open to the public in front of Griffin's Cafe will still allow for overflow of these residents to park? And lastly, having all option, have all options been looked at before pushing this through? For example, is there any availability to build a parking lot for the residents that live in these parking, apartment buildings nearby? So please, before you make your vote to push this through, uh, through full council uh, vote, I would just ask for you to take into consideration that this will be the best for the residents, the, those living in the apartment buildings, the business for Griffin's Cafe, and all residents and local businesses throughout the city of Hoyoke. Thank you, Ms. McGivern. Uh, anybody else want to speak? Uh, just up, uh, come on up to the mic, name, address. Since Ms. McGivern, we, we, she went over 90 seconds, you're, 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 going, to get the, you're, you're, you're going to get deducted 15 seconds. Uh, I'll, cut, I'll cut that in half, Mr. Bartley. Okay. Um, I just want to, John Rowan, yeah. 69 Ashley Road in Holyoke. Um, I just want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to speak, and uh, I'll make this quick. I'll get right to the point. Um, I know that the people that are looking for parking in front of their homes, their houses, their apartments, whatever it may be, um, to park in different areas is a little bit of an in inconvenience, but the financial impact that it would have on my family um, and like Councilman McGivern said to the other stores and places around there um, to put a mildly would be very debilitating towards like I said our family and to the surrounding people that do look towards the income in that area um, my family's been in that area. Um, as you know, Mr. Barley, my grandmother was your father's secretary <clears throat> for many years. We've been in Hoyle for my whole life. And again, that small inconvenience that it may be for the people that have to walk a little bit farther or spend a little bit of time looking for parking um, in different areas, if 
they did turn it into residential parking, it would, uh, I don't want to speak in hyperbole, but I'm really not in effect by saying that it would be catastrophic to our family's income. All right, thank you, Mr. Rowland. Okay, uh, anyone else? Uh, okay, there are none. Okay, just back to regular order, Councilor Roman. Yes, uh, thank you. This is in Ward 1, um, and so Councilor LeBron Martinez is not here today, but I can, I, I want to say I empathize. I can, you know, only compare it to something similar that's happening in South Holyoke um, with Morgan School, a lot of budding businesses there. Um, and so if I was to make all of South Holyoke resident-only parking, which the residents would love, it would kill a lot of the businesses um, in and around that area. And I specifically think of the school next to the Turnverein Hall. <laughs> That's always fun, um, but I can't limit that. Um, and so for that purposes, I'm going to support my colleague's decision and yours to support and say, listen, this, this problem's only going to be exacerbated as we continue to grow as a city. Uh, it's a good problem to have, but I don't think by limiting that uh, we can run into that. And yes, we're looking more at we're seeing a lot more in the city, a lot of pocket lots becoming open that hopefully a lot of these landlords could buy as a butters. And I only know that now because now I'm the ED of a nonprofit that is next to some lots that we're looking at for those same reasons uh, to be able to support parking. Um, because you're right, we have a lot of apartment buildings that aren't supported with the proper amount of parking because they've just been grandfathered in. There are lots of floors, not a lot of people. So I'm gonna support the leave to withdraw only because I get this complaint all the time in my ward and I tell my residents the same thing. There's no way I can choose between this business that's been here all this time versus your parking. And it is at a premium, and I do empathize with you. And let's just try to make it work. And I also think of CHI Insurance Agency right on Main Street. We do have, believe it or not, some apartments right on Main Street next to our building as well, where if it's a snowstorm or something like that, they're so nice, they actually let the tenants park during snowstorms. So I'm sure you guys do the same thing. And so I'm going to be voting to support your business say that I hear and empathize with the residents in that area as well, because I get it, I understand it. Uh, but we, like my colleague said, we have to walk that fine line where we, I don't want your business to shut down and close shop. Um, so I'm gonna be supporting Councilor McGivern and, and I think a lot of us, like we tabled it. I was waiting to hear from my colleague who is the ward representative. A lot of times I think that's why we wait out of respect. Um, but I just would recommend that, you know, we give it leave to withdraw without prejudice to say, hey, we've heard those concerns. I know you can't weigh in because it is possible, but I mean, I'm facing this in Churchill. We did try to do a street, but it's 100% residential. There's like no businesses around. So we have started to do in the Churchill neighborhood, but where I can't do it is next to the CVS and the new bank that's opening up uh, because we there is a section that is currently resident only parking, but now that the bank customers are gonna be looking for places to park or the CVS continues to grow, I'm at a premium for parking. So I empathize, I hear with you, I hear with the residents. So it's my nuanced response to basically say, I'm gonna to vote to give it, leave to the drawer, make that motion tonight. Uh, if my colleagues don't already to say, we want you to continue your business. We don't want you to stop. And we hear what the residents are saying in the city, we need more parking. So thank you guys. Council Lacey. Thank you. Um, I apologize for coming in late. I'm now a PTO mom <laughs> and our <laughs> monthly meeting <laughs> happens on uh, Tuesday night. So um, apologize for coming in late. Bob, did you? create a proposal for the parking solution here? Um, just because I'm late and trying to catch up here. Did you did you propose a solution? I didn't. I, I might, what I stated was that this is really more of a policy decision to be made by the council and not a technically based decision. It's feasible. Mm -hmm. If the council voted to move forward with it, we would implement it, but it's not really something that we have a technical opinion on. And was it was the proposal that was being considered um, simply uh, residential parking for the area and like putting up putting up signs that say residential parking and and not limiting the hours or I believe the the order was strictly to place resident only parking signs in front of 340 Hamden Street so that's that's what we responded to so one one thing that I think we could consider and, and keep on the table for discussion is um, like no like resident parking overnight only or or something like something that limits the hours because. You're not open all night as a business. Um, I understand that you, you want to be able to um, you know, maintain your clientele and make it um, easy for them to come in, but I think that to say like resident parking overnight only um, and, and limit the hours from like, I don't know, midnight through 7 a.m. I think, unfortunately, my answer to that question would be the same, that it really is a matter of policy as opposed to technical. Um, and we wouldn't be opposed to it, but we, we 
Do you know, I know we have some um, no, no overnight parking signs in the city that say a particular set of hours. Do you, do you recall off the top of your head what those hours are? I can't speak to them offhand. I can research that and bring that back to the committee if you'd like. Um, through the chair, um, Councilor Roman, do you know the o no overnight parking on the library parking lot that's uh, a... I mean, this seems to be a solution that really, uh, it could work for both constituents in the area, so like the residential and the business constituents, um, because they think that folks want to be able to, you know, go to sleep at night and wake up in the morning and, and have some sort of access to the spaces near their house. And, and if they're going to be vacated by, you know, 12, 1 o'clock at night, because that's when the businesses are operating at the latest, um, it seems like there there's a way to meet halfway in there. Thank you, Councilor Roman. Yeah, my only question, again, I'm not trying to weigh into another ward counselor's business is, I don't. this is just specific to one building that brought her these concerns. So I'm just not sure if then we're gonna open Pandora's box and then the next day, the next building's gonna want no overnight parking and then the next building. Um, so I, I just, again, I, I would deflect to the ward counselor. Um, you know, I respect the will of the committee. Mine's is still to just respectfully give it leave to withdraw if, if she goes back and speaks to those tenants and I think she should approach you all not telling her how to do her job at all because I respect Gladys uh, maybe you all can come up with an internal solution with the res if you know it's this building in specific maybe you all can try to work something out with Gladys and I know Juan had a similar dispute in Ward 6 over you know some tenant parking issues so and I know I've dealt with it too um, and like I said specific to Bank ESB they're another bank that, again, those constituents along Churchill, where they're going to allow them during snowstorms and stuff to park for free in their parking lot. So, like, there are places where you can meet. I just don't know enough about this to, and I agree with Councilor Lisi. I think there's tons of other mechanisms we could put in place for this specific building that's bought these complaints. Um, I just, I, I don't know what the will of the body is, and I don't want to necessarily weigh into that. But I was just bringing up those points. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. I, I, I have to go last. Uh, I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's our job here to um, to carve out particulars. So I, I would oppose that uh, now. I think this is if an at large counselor or or any counselor, but the, particularly the ward counselor, wants to go there to sort of canvas the neighborhood to see what would work for the neighborhood. I don't think we we can come up with a solution here that's going to satisfy. Uh, everyone, and I think we've seen that time and time again when there's, when the due diligence not put in. I mean, never mind not showing up twice, um, but and and no no written anything. I don't have a text or an email. I don't I have nothing. I have I have the the language in front of me, to see if there's any kind of exception or to carving out or to whether or not anyone's been approached. Uh, I I don't see it. But if if somebody wants to make any kind of a motion, I'll I'll enter. Well, we're, we're mis well we still have a quorum, so we're okay. Um, I'll, I'll entertain any kind of a motion at this point. Um, so, I would motion to table and just um, see see if we could work more concretely. Um, I understand what you're saying about how like we we shouldn't be using this venue to create ideas for how to solve the problem necessarily, but um, to to give leave to withdraw and start the process anew seems like a big waste of time if we can't you know if we can't if we should be able to come up with some idea that's going to work for the community and then move it forward from there um okay so you want motions made hey can i, can I say oh. something about that i mean i think that's the, the not the correct approach i mean the community <laughs> isn't just go. One person asking from 340 hampton street for something that they need but it's the entire community and we're hearing from the community this evening, and when we have this problem in a lot of areas within the city, overnight parking is not the issue. It, it's during the day and it's during the evening hours where, where our, our businesses and our residential parking conflict, but it's the way the city was built. We're not going to be able to correct it. There's a city-owned lot behind the building. We can sell it to the owner if he's willing to make a parking lot, and he can get up to cold because he has no off-street parking, that, which, is, which is wrong in itself. Um, just to keep tabling it is is you know is doing 
is not doing the entire, helping the entire picture and helping the people who may live in the city but come to another part of the city to frequent a business. That, that's the, the health and stability of the city is, is to keep businesses going so that our residential taxes and our residential neighborhoods can be kept up. And our services that we have to pay for, such as that alleyway where, where we have trash pickup and police and fire in our schools, are we able to afford them? So the big picture is what we're talking about here. I, I don't, I mean, Councilor Brown Martinez wants to give it leave to withdraw. To, you know, that's fine with me. Otherwise, I, I'm suggesting we vote no. Thank you, Councilor McGivern. Um, I'll recognize Councilor Lisi. If you want, do you want to renew your motion? I mean, a motion to table. I didn't hear a second, so it doesn't doesn't seem to be the the will okay, of the so body. Okay, so you, you don't want to renew your motion. Okay, that's that's all. Um, I'll entertain any other motion. I'm going to make a motion to again leave to withdraw without prejudice, just respectfully give it leave to withdraw. Second. Okay, so uh, on the motion to uh, give it uh, give it leave to withdraw. Uh, has been made and seconded under discussion. Hearing none on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. So we're going to give a leave to a draw. Thank you for coming. All right. So uh, let me just note that on here. Bob, you're the floor. Go ahead to the okay, um, thank you. regular order. So, item number three. Item number three is a request to change the yield signs at the intersection of Westfield Road and Homestead from a yield sign to a stop sign. The notation from Councillor Vacan was that there are site limitation issues that are creating a safety hazard. Um, I did get out there, I took a look at it. I do believe that there are site distance or site obstructions there. Um, in looking at it a little bit closer though, I think the site um, obstructions can be relatively easily cured. As you may know, there's a large island, large planted island. As you're heading eastbound on Westfield and taking a right southbound onto Homestead, that may date from when that intersection was, was reconstructed a number of years ago. There's several large ornamental grass, grasses planted in the center of that island, and today you can't see across the island. Hmm. Um, so what we would propose to do is to um, cut the grasses down at the end of the season, uh, take the winter to come up with some alternatives that would either be lower grasses, low maintenance, things that would still achieve the intent of that, but eliminate the site distance issue um, in lieu of changing out the yield signs to stop signs. Okay. Um, the concern of, with changing those out is it might actually start to impede traffic flow at that intersection, and we'd rather not go that direction if there's an easier fix to it. One second. Okay, uh, questions for uh, the engineer? Seeing none, is there a, is there a motion, for, for example, to accept the recommendation of the DPW of the Motion uh, to accept the recommendation second. of the DPW engineer. <laughs> well said. A motion has been a second to accept the recommendation of the DPW engineer. Uh, uh, under discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, <laughs> number four. Number four, um, that one took a little bit of research because there's actually five handicapped parking um, signs placed in that particular block of Oak Street and I had to take a look at what the ordinance say, what's actually there in the street and compare the two and try to make some sense out of it. I believe what the situation, but the problem is here is that the sign that's currently placed just to the, I guess I would call it northeast of 121 Oak Street is placed on an existing existing utility pole and has an arrow pointing in the wrong direction. And by pointing away from the property as opposed to towards the property, it places the it places the handicapped space in the wrong location. Mm. I believe it's as simple as replacing that sign with an arrow that's pointing in the other direction, and that'll place the fully put place the twenty foot space fully within one twenty one Oak Street. I have so, a question. Oh, Council Lisi. Uh, so is it just the sign that's incorrect and all the measurements for the ordinance are correct? Or is it, are they going to go hand in hand with, with uh, the change? One thing I did find is I believe that the distance that was called out in the ordinance is incorrect and that the distance should actually, it, currently it says 67 feet southerly of Dwight Street. Um, it's actually installed 87 feet southerly of Dwight Street. So I would recommend a correction changing 67 to 87 and we move forward with uh, putting a different sign up that points the arrow in the opposite direction. 
Motion to amend chapter 86. Second. Um, to which, which section is it, would it be? Um, it would be in of the ordinance, section 86-326. Thank you. Section 326 um, related to the space for 121 Oak Street, so that instead of reading 67, it reads 87. Mm -hmm. Second. Eight. There you go. And, and just accept the recommendation of the city engineer? To change the signage, yes. Okay. So as motion is made and seconded to uh, make the technical, corrections to the legal, technical corrections to the legal language and to accept the recommendation of the city engineer on the motion under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item four. Item four. Five, I'm sorry, item five, apologize. Is a order that uh, Chairman Bartley had filed relative to installing signage and warning lights along the schools, or at the schools along North, Northampton Street primarily. Um, we do agree with the, or we understand the benefit that would be achieved by doing that. Um, we do note that there isn't currently monies in the budget for that purpose, that it would typically cost between $5,000 to install the, the typical school ahead flashing light um, as well as signs. But we do note that we are moving ahead as the, as the committee is aware with the um, signal improvements project. Right now it's going very well from a budget standpoint. <coughs> we have purchased most of the equipment that's come in well within budget. Um, we're optimistic that an opportunity would present itself uh, probably better understood mm, by late spring, early next summer, to possibly allocate some of what was previously appropriated to that purpose. So what we would recommend is that we come back with a report on the budget status uh, to, the, to the committee um, in the spring, I give you an update, and if we believe that the funding exists within the budget that was already appropriated, to then move forward with, with the improvements. Is that the complete streets? No, that is actually the $1.1 million signal upgrade project um, that we have purchased all the equipment. We're in the process of procuring um, electrical subcontractors to do the wiring, doing the installation. Um, we're optimistic that's going to come in well within budget. And as, as I said, it may present an opportunity to reallocate those funds for a fairly similar purpose. Yeah, that would be great. So I would entertain a motion to table, table this, uh, and I'll just, and then Bob, you can calendar this with uh, Linda, but probably the uh, second ordinance meeting in April. Okay. Is that okay? That would be good. <laughs> second. Oh, thank you. Okay, motion made and seconded to table this um, to the second ordinance meeting in April. On discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, tabled. Uh, let's see. Number six. Number six is very similar to the item that we discussed or that the committee discussed previously <coughs> relative to a request for resident-only parking. Our position would remain the same, that it really isn't a technical uh, decision, and so therefore we really don't have a recommendation to, to present to the committee. What's, what's over at 179 High? Where? Oh, nice. well, I'm sure it's like... What was it? What was it previously? Uh, I mean, how many spaces are we are we talking about here? It, it doesn't yeah. say. Yeah, that that I, I think I think in this in this case, uh, I I think there's even more businesses in in that area than than the, well more, well many more businesses and and parking um, and just meter parking there. So what what the councilor is saying. Uh, what I'm reading here and what the councilor is saying is that we we take away one of those. One or more, one or more spaces in, a, in an already heavily impacted area. So I, I, I personally would oppose it, but but there's that. So, Council Lisi. Thanks. Please. So I was contacted this week by um, residents on High Street asking me for something similar about permanent resident parking mm -hmm. because um, they're finding it to be a, a huge inconvenience to have to feed the meters all the time. How do other large business um, dent cities deal with this is there I mean is it like an overnight resident parking only or like what what do other cities do to to manage this problem because we're we're, we're filling up and it's 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 a positive thing but we need to kind of I think find something that would work for both sets of communities I, I can't answer that with out just guessing at this moment but I can certainly research it and come back to the committee and and see what the range of alternatives might be because I do agree it's a problem that isn't going to get better. any better. 
Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be filing a new order. <laughs> That's, that's something similar and may, maybe I word it differently so it's not necessarily for like a, a specific area of high street but that we explore um, what parking yeah I'll, I'll, I'll figure out some wording but like some some sort of parking solutions to meet both the business and residential um, neighbors in, in our downtown yeah I, I, I agree that there should be something I, I think the solution if I may just humbly suggest, is to fix the problems, the myriad problems with the Mayor Pru parking garage. I am dying to hear from the ad hoc parking committee whether or not they've even met, never mind, I mean, here's the latest. Here's the latest, that the city stopped ticketing for about three months. Do we know why? Well, I know why. The city literally ran out of parking tickets. There were no more parking tickets available. That's a lot of tickets. It's, it's, almost, it's almost laughable, um, but yet, yet there it is. Um, the the uh, vendor that's running the parking has called me on multiple occasions. What can we do about this? I said, well, talk to the, talk to the administration to find out about the ad hoc parking committee. Um, I mean, it's the same way with the homeless homeless committee, but I won't go on that tangent again. Uh, it's, we, it's are just, re, we are reconvening. It's, it's, uh, it's true enough. <laughs> true enough. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad it's going to convene. That's, that's good news. Uh, Councillor McGivern. Thank you. Um, I agree with Councillor Bartley on the ad hoc parking committee. For some reason, it met once. Unfortunately, I didn't make the meeting myself, but I was hoping that they would reconvene. It's... it's um, Rory, who's gone, myself, I think Gladys, uh, the purchasing agent, and uh, Mike McMahon is, is, is spearheading it. There, there is a comprehensive downtown plan, but there's a lot more to take into consideration than just um, what happens overnight. There is no overnight parking, which is what most cities are about, where there are businesses because of snow removal and street cleaning. Um, the city offers overnight parking to residents in the parking deck on the White Street for a reasonable monthly rate. And I think landlords who want to rent apartments in downtown should take that into consideration for, you know, within their rent themselves so that they can offer, if they don't have off-street parking, they can offer the, uh, the resident the uh, ability to park in the deck on Suffolk Street. The people who live downtown want the, want the conveniences of being able to walk to all their needs. And that's what most downtowns are about. And mass transit is usually a big part of downtowns, although we could certainly see improvement in our mass transit, and, uh, although they are very close to the PVTA bus station. But I, I, I think it's, it's even more so than what we talked about a few minutes ago. This is a dilemma that just is not going to be resolved by cutting up our meter parking spaces. Our meters are are there to attract people to have a place to park for an hour or two, do business downtown, go to lunch, uh, take care of, of what the business is, and, and to uh, do it to be transient and to leave downtown. They're not there to uh, to see cars that are parked all day, and that's part of our problem. And David, thank you for the the parking ticket uh, heads up because. It, it's, it just keeps going. You know, we're, we're, we're negative revenue instead well, of making you, you close to a quarter make, million dollars a year. I, I, w I wish I could say I could make it up, but it's an unimpeachable, sort of unimpeachable source. So, um, so there's, there's that. I, I mean, I, 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 I mean I, I'm going to make a motion to give this leave to a draw. Second. Okay, on that motion, under discussion, hearing none. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that's that's a lead to a draw for nothing. Okay, get my notes here. Uh, where are we? Uh, number seven. Well, thank you, Councilor Lisa. I appreciate that. I lost my track. Uh, Council uh, number seven. Go ahead, Bob. Okay, um, number seven is an order that's been out there for some time since February. It appears. Um, Unfortunately, I've only recently been getting, I've recently been made aware of it and starting to get my head into the issue. Um, what I have done at this point is we have, as, as the 
committee had requested we reinforce the request to the police department to get accident data along that corridor in that section. Um, have not seen that yet, but we put a request in um, on behalf of the committee. We are also reviewing the data we've collected in the past because it's my understanding that we have done speed studies on McIntosh. Um, I haven't reviewed the data yet personally. Seven is um, the, the uh, mountain road. Oh, oh, a mountain road, sorry, I jumped. Thank you. Councilor Lisi is keeping us in line, thank God. <laughs> I was all over what were you place. doing before I, I got over, here? <laughs> I was all over the place. <laughs> well, well, I, I, I think we were in public service, so there you go. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, item number seven. This was an order that Councilor Vacan had, um, had placed back in March. Uh, we discussed it at the last committee meeting. At that point, what Councilor Vacan indicated was she wanted to have the engineering department uh, draft a request to send to the police department to move this process along. We have done a speed study in Mountain Road. We have confirmed that the drivers are driving the statutory speed. So the issue right now is if the city wants to drop the speed limit um, and, 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 and place a, a 30 mile per hour posted speed limit, there has to be a safety based reason for doing so and then that has to be approved by MassDOT. Um, so we've asked the police department to offer their opinion and to complete their evaluation of any safety issues that they might be aware of along Mountain Road. Well, I'm going to pop on, on, a, on a wonderful order Councillor Lisi filed, and uh, I, I know I voted for it, uh, well, surfacely, I, I, um, uh, relative to the 25-mile-per-hour uh, the citywide speed limit that passed this body in a voice vote I yes. unanimously. And um, so the ball is in your court where are we with that? We are procuring the signs as you speak, um, as, we, as I speak, sorry. Um, we have to get approval. Some of the signs have to be placed in mass DOT rights of way. Uh, it's my understanding they have to be placed on every street coming into the city. Uh, so we're, we are procuring those signs. We are in the process. We've made the requests of mass DOT to get the approval to post the signs within the, the mass DOT right of way. So we're, we're well underway. Um, and we'll, well be, yeah. can we get, I mean, I, I heard Councilor McGivern on this loud and clear, and, and, he's, <coughs> and, he's, and he's, he's, he's right, uh, but it would be nice if we could get a, a list of the, the impacted streets prior to the signs going up, especially those who are ward councilors, because <laughs> we're going to get the, <laughs> bear the brunt of it. Uh, and I think Councilor McGivern is very right. He's, you know, let us, let us know, you know, where these are, where these are going to be. Mm. Uh, before we do it, I mean, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to really uh, change my my opinion, f impose my opinion for a professional engineer. But yet, you know, we're the ones that kind of live here and tool around more than you know, more than the average, more than you guys. So um, it would be, be it'd be good if we can uh, just get a heads up on that. I don't know if it does, maybe not necessarily a, a formal communication to the clerk, but at least an email to the full board, to the full city council would be nice. Sure. Um, I'm a big believer in the power of a figure, so if I can, I'll put together a map that shows the streets that are impacted and where the signs will be placed. And Yeah, and, it's, yeah. and obviously it's going to be, I mean, some of the major thoroughfares might just stay the same, but maybe a portion of them might be, mm. might be impacted, and that's, I mean, that was, that's going to impact all of us. Understood. Um, I, I mean, if I could, real quick. First, um, yeah. and I mean, there's two things. One, one is Mountain Road. Is it considered thickly settled? No, it's not. Okay, and so with the speed limit is 40 miles an hour by design. So the new ordinance doesn't have an effect on Mountain Road or any area that has a speed limit set by design. So I, I, I've also interpreted, and I did vote against the ordinance, I admit, but I also interpreted that if there are 30 mile an hour signs up, the new ordinance doesn't change the 30 miles an hour sign where the signs are posted. I would believe so that unless the council voted to rescind any orders that they might have, yes. No, I, that, no, that vote, what vote was to adopt what was the recommendation through Mass General Law that we can, we, we nuanced it by putting the ball in, in the engineer's court, but we nuanced it to say it could be citywide. So it would But there, there was caveats that were, I'm not sure if, you know, they're written into the ordinance, Councilor Bartley, but there were caveats about some existing speed limits could not be changed without another vote from the city council. And originally it was talked about doing this street by street. Well, that, but that didn't happen, Joe. I said originally. Okay, okay, well. No. 
because I, I'm <laughs> no, going to remind I everybody. I'm going to remind everybody right. when they come knocking on the door here. You know what I said. Well, respectfully. Well, no, no, but no, obviously respectfully. It's coming. I'm gonna, well, I'll say I'll say respectfully as well that that if, if there's one complaint I get, it's it's speeding. So there's there's that. Council Lisi. Thanks. Um, so I think what we passed was that we're adopting the 25 mile per hour speed limit sign citywide. And, and it's not just the signs, that it's the speed limit. So the default speed limit is 25 unless otherwise marked. But just because there's a sign there for 30 miles per hour doesn't mean that it's been designated via the ordinance a, a 30 mile per hour zone. It would have been the default with some signage. Is, isn't that the, the case? What I, I have not read the ordinance that the council passed, so I'll need to. 30 read mile it. hours of sign require a vote of the city council to put the sign up. But but, now, but, it, but it's only but it was only to designate the default speed limit. You didn't have to you didn't have to do any speed study to put up that sign. That was the default speed limit. If you wanted the sign though, that would be a vote of the city council because otherwise it was understood to be the default. Now the default is changing to 25, and so we will have to rescind the 30 mile per hour signs in some areas that are not necessarily designated 30 miles per hour but have been assigned a sign. As long as we do it one at a time, vote by vote, on those signs. But that's not what. That's not what. No, I understand what you're saying, David. But it's. It's. I'm also saying something a little different. Well, well, right now we have to wait for our. Uh, and we're <laughs> off track here, anyways. We, we, we don't have a quorum <laughs> either, so we, we've got to. We've got to get back to a quorum. So yeah. hold, hold on. Sorry. Okay, now we have a quorum. Okay, um, so uh, that's that's fine. Um, Okay, uh, so, Mr. Parent Bob, what, what's your what's your pleasure at this point? I guess my pleasure on the 25 mile per hour issue first, if if you'd like me to address that, is that I need to review exactly what was passed by the by okay. the council. Okay. Um, All right. Get then, familiar then with on the, that. And the order before us. I will also review the existing ordinances that have adopted 30 mile per hour speed to get a sense of how many they are and where they are mm -hmm. in the event that it's going to be necessary to individually rescind those. Um, and then additionally, this 30 mile per hour sign is not just a default speed limit. It would be a new, new speed limit because it's 40 miles per hour currently on Mountain Road. Is that what I understand? That is what the order requests, correct? And so it's that, asking for a, a reduction in the speed limit itself, not just the signs. That's correct. It's currently statutorily a 40 mile per hour road. Mm -hmm. We've confirmed that drivers are driving that speed. If there's a de desire to reduce it, there's a process that has to be followed to do so. Well, I'm of the opinion that we should uh, recommend it be passed and then start the process to review it. I mean, it's a, the ward counselor filed the order. I mean, I don't ever go out there, so. I mean, that's, that's just my humble opinion, but. Well, I think what, what I heard from the engineer is that um, people are currently driving 40 miles an hour and we're, we're seeking some insight from the police department about accident reports and, and other information that would help us make a decision as to whether or not it should be designated a 30 mile hour um, area as opposed to a 40. Okay, so, so, so. Then I would it, table, motion it, to table. Well then, but, but that's fine. But before I recognize that motion, you're you're going to do a little work with the HPD on this, or do a traffic study, or what's going to happen? We've asked the the police department to look at the roadway from a safety standpoint. That's part of the information that will ultimately be need to be submitted to MassDOT to get their approval. So we we are part way through that process. Oh. Um, if the review by the police department supports that conclusion, uh, we'll then move it forward, or at least we'll. We'll, we'll report back to the committee first because the committee and then the council would have to vote to take the next step, I believe. But okay. we're, we're so how, how much time do you need? Um, it's in the police department's hands. I will reach back out to oh. them. Uh, well, to well, Linda can just take this up when she's she'll she'll circle back to you. So um, motion table. Second motion made to the table, not debatable. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion has been um, the table. Okay, that leads us to ten. On this thing, and wait, nine. did we actually do nine? Because uh, we, we started to talk about it, but I don't know if we actually. We, we that was resolved. Yeah, this yeah, nine was a carryover. Yeah, this, like, this, this has already been voted on at full okay. city council. That yeah. was up. That was just so we're on item <coughs> nine on our agenda. 
correct. Ten. Eight. And nine, as nine. I nine? Nine. Oh. On our agenda, ten on this uh, uh, punch list. Nine. As I started to say a moment ago, um, this is an order that uh, Chairman Bartley had filed back in February. Um, it's relatively new to myself. I've been starting to get my, my head into it. Um, I have reached out to the police department to request crash data and accident data. Um, I'm aware that we have done speed counts on McIntosh before. I haven't looked at that data yet. It's, it's a couple of years old at this point. Um, so what I would propose to is to report back the ordinance committee next month as I get further and further into um, evaluating that, that issue. Great, okay, so we'll accept a motion to table. Or not. Motion to table. Um, great, uh, I'll second that on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and the last item, uh, if I could get a Oh, if I could get a motion to uh, to take that off the table for discussion. Motion to take up item number ten. Second. On the, on, on the motion to take item number ten off the table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, this is a motion that um, uh, Nelson filed. I second it. Thanks, Bob, for your help and time. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. Our city holder draft and adopt a small cell phone, small cell tower installation ordinance. An ordinance would limit equipment. Instead, ordinance would limit equipment. Um, and must not extend further than 50 inches on top of the pole roof. Once installed, all rooftop poles, poles, rooftops would uh, be subject to inspection and, and a $500 fee. Uh, I, I don't really <laughs> want to take this up more than we just took it off the table uh, because Nelson had to step away. Uh, this, yeah. this came up, uh, I think it was in a DGR meeting, and, and there were, we were getting a pro proliferation of, um, of small roof, cell tower. rooftop cell, cell towers. Yep. And Nelson saw that in other municipalities, there were ordinances, ordinances to this effect, mm -hmm. and and it's it's uh, it's a way a, to to regulate it. And and uh, there's that, Council Lisi. Um, my one question would be: This is starting to sound like a zoning type of issue that would need a public hearing. Oh, very good. Yeah, very very, very possible. Um, so we, we can, uh, we don't have our, our law department here with us, but I'll, I'll make that a note. Um, I mean, that's what we have to do for the, the full cell towers in terms of, uh, yeah, there, there's a whole section of the zoning um, ordinances that, that would say here are the setbacks, is, here's the height, dimensional requirements. Yeah, very good point. So I, I think what we ought to do is is uh, table this, and I'll ask Linda to take it up. And uh, seek some advice from legal counsel as to whether yeah. it needs to be uh, a public hearing and go through the notification okay. process and planning board input, et cetera. So, so that's important. Um, so Ryan, who's taking our, our minutes right now, Ryan will uh, send a communication. So w w the motion is made in a second, so send a communication to legal to get a, a legal opinion on this, on that motion, all in favor? Can we I, just get a, I mean, not a full opinion, but can we just get some advice from? Well, amend that. Um, can the motion is made in a second to uh, get um, some. Administrative uh, uh, assistant to seek some guidance. Get, get some yeah. guidance from a lot of Department, not in a formal legal opinion, but at least an email to the chair and to, and to the committee on this. As yeah. the motion is made and second, all in favor? Aye. Okay, so let me just write down there. So, legal advice. Whether we need a public hearing. Okay. Uh, that brings us. Oh. Council McGivern? Motion to oh, adjourn. Okay. Yeah, all, right. Mo all right. Motion made and second, second. adjourned. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.